Herman Hermit's report. Violence is very much in the air these days. What is the cause of violence? Why is it on the increase? In order to find out the answer to some of these questions, I spoke to some of the people who are directly involved. I talked first to a young man who is a convicted soccer hooligan. His name, Ted Steger. Ted, tell me, what drives you to this violence at football matches? Uh, well, I normally take my dad's box or a sign at the nearest <laughs> yeah. What I was meaning was what are the causes of these fracas on the terraces in which you are involved? Well, of course, now you're asking about the fracas on the terraces. Yes, I am. Uh, well, I'll tell you straight off, I do not start the fight in myself. You mean you are provoked? I never retaliate unless provoked, right? Uh, take last Saturday, for instance. In the stand, I'm waiting for the football match to start. Very patient, quiet. A small, quiet, dangerous, Hitler-type bloke comes and stands beside me, blatantly flaunting a rosette, purporting to be representative of the visiting team of thugs who are about to sully the verdant pitch of the 11 good men and through a Starbridge United. This is your team, Starbridge United. Yes, S-T-O-U-B-R-O-D-T. We are the champions, Starbridge. I'm sure you are. What did you do then? Well, Faced with this indisputable act of aggression, I've done what any normal red-blooded uh, supporter of Stourbridge would do. I asked him politely for a light, and while his hands were in his pockets, I laid one on him, didn't I? <laughs> so without this provocation, no violence would have occurred. Oh, I mean, I never start fires, I only finish them. <laughs> Thank you, Ted Steger. I wonder if we can learn something about violence in human beings by studying violence in the animal kingdom. Professor Luboski, in his book on aggression, has pointed out through his experiments that spiders are often driven to fury by certain colors. For example, the blue bottom of a blue bottle fly will cause a spider to go mad with rage. Perhaps some crowd hostility towards the police can be explained in these terms. More likely it can't. Nevertheless, I spoke to Inspector Necker of the Yard about it. Well, you know, I think the only way we're going to be able to cope with this problem, and let's face it, it is a problem. It's a big problem, and we've got to face it, so let's face it fair and square in the face. If we're going to face this problem of the rising tide of crime and violence, I think we and the police have to be eternally vigilant. I think, I think vigilance is the watchword here, because if we aren't vigilant, then we're not going to detect the crime. And if we don't detect the crime, we can't find out who did it. And after the villigans, of course, comes in the diggolans. We've got to be diggolans. Going around from house to house, searching the house, looking for fibers in the pockets, vacuum cleaning in bodies, you see, inspecting the teeth, seeing if the teeth tally with the bullets found in the corpse, this type of thing. Modern forensic medicine, plus watches, hovercraft, and sort of two-way radios, a wonderful aid to the police. But of course, even with all these modern aids, we still rely on you, the general public. We need you. Because without you, the general public, going out and actually committing the crimes, then there's nothing at all for us to do. Thank you. Good night. Strong views from the police. I then decided to ask an ordinary member of the public her views on violence. Uh, my husband, Ronald, is a manure spreader. And, um, of course, when he comes home, uh, about violence, madam. Oh, yes, that's the one with the hole, isn't it? I can't tell it from that. <laughs> madam. Thank you. I then decided to give up speaking to ordinary members of the public, and I talked instead to Justin Honeyblade, one of London's leading male models who had strong views on the subject. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm quite convinced that uh, violence is a product of frustration. I mean, if one is uh, some sort of spirit in a boring dismal job, then of course uh, one's going to need an outlet and veer towards this uh, violent thing. Sorry, Stephen. Shall I guess? Uh, I think it's actually important that one, one uh, finds a satisfying, uh, meaningful, absolutely fulfilling type of word. Sorry, Johnny. Sorry. Uh, and then, of course, the whole problem never arises, does it? 
Justin Honeyblade sees the answer in more creative outlets for young people, 